Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I'm gonna do a story right now, it's out of the hedge. I'm gonna link it below. It's about uh, warnings from Maserick um, about the South China port congestion. They're calling it a more significant disruption than the Suez Canal closure itself. So, you know, just when you think you've seen the worst of it, it tends, it's interesting how these warnings come out, but I think there's actually some positives here too. So we're gonna go over that. It says we uh, previewed last week to readers that the port congestion wasn't just absorbed across the U.S. West Coast ports such as Los Angeles and Long Beach, which by the way, Los Angeles just uh, was able to process a million containers uh, in a certain period of time, which is, an, it's a record, all-time record, which is pretty amazing. It says, um, but also severe congestion was developing in South Southern China. Sorry, you can hear all kinds of stuff in the background. Uh, I got blowers going on and cell phones going off. It's no big deal. Um, so now it says the largest container line, Maserick, if I have it pronounced right, calls the port congestion at Yan Ten Tenan. Um, it's my pronunciation's bad. Uh, Yan Tan International Container Terminal, a deep water port uh, in Shenzhen, in southern China, a more significant disruption to its operators than the shutdown of the Suez Canal in March. Now guys, we just did a report on where we saw a, I mean, totally reckless driving of one container ship running into another and cr collapsing a crane, almost killing some people. I mean, they're running away from it, which now took not only that crane out, but that actual uh, port, that little uh, docking station um, out because they have to disassemble the crane and then hopefully get those other cranes next to it back online. Um, but this is really interesting because there's some uh, graphics below. It says um, the manager director of the shipping container was quoted uh, saying that the port is operating at 40% capacity and we're expecting that to continue for the next month with significant delays for vessels to be able to berth. That's pretty amazing, 40%. Now we've seen the cost of shipping container um, going from uh, 1500 to 15000 right? This is not only owing, um, uh, costing uh merchants that are trying to get their goods across the world to sell, um, they're, it's causing them significant increases in shipping costs, but also with the, uh, places like this that are massive, these shipping uh, container ports that are only operating at 40% capacity, this obviously shows the narrative of why those shipping containers are costing so much to ship, right? Because you can only get so much, so it's whoever is gonna pay the most um, is gonna get their stuff shipped across the world. We just saw another container ship completely full, burn completely down to nothing. It lost all of its cargo also. So we're seeing everything from ports that are slowing down, you know, in their operations, to ports that are getting destroyed by ships running into each other. Because, you know, even if it's not recklessness, the facts are there's so many ships trying to get in, load up and get out, that they're running into each other to ships that are burning down. And this is all happening at the same time, right? It's the perfect storm, literally, like he says right here. We called it a perfect storm ahead of the peak shipping season. Remember, it has to do with the time of year when people are out during the spring and summertime. They're spending money. They're excited about life. That happens all over the world. And that's when goods are needed the most. So it says a recent surge in COVID-19 infections in the port area and prevention and restriction measures put in place by local authorities is the primary reason for the lack of capacity at the port. Okay, so it's not that they don't want to ship things it's not like they're having um issues with their mechanical uh things or or uh you know being organized they have a, the, the lack of being able to bring enough people in because of these restrictions with COVID 19 to be able to to work at full capacity so it's really putting a strain on people so now i want to talk about the positives because you're like you know you're bringing so many negatives well it's always a positive when you know a negative I hope people understand that when you know that something is bad, that something bad is coming or something bad is happening right now and you know it, then all you have to do is either move to avoid it or position yourself to take advantage, right? And I think that a, a very weak minded person is the type that goes, well, I can't believe you take advantage of um, someone's downfall or something's uh, collapse. But the facts of the matter are, and all my subscribers know this, is when you go warn people, they don't wanna listen. They don't wanna 
heed the warning. They want to live exactly where they are. So the positive is understanding these things and trying to take advantage from them. Well, how do you take advantage of shipping costs exploding? Well, the facts are just like with lumber, which we've already seen when it first started spiking, I said, don't worry, it'll collapse because there's external factors that have, you know, that are at play also. And there'll be a point where people stop buying. Well, the facts are true here. What we're going to start seeing is that people are not going to start shipping their goods. We're going to see panic. We're going to see explosions in prices. And if you just wait and take a step back, there'll be a point where people go from saying, man, things are getting expensive to I'm not buying that because I can't afford it. When that happens, a little bit more time goes. There's a collapse in the price. And then what happens is the shipping uh, companies aren't moving goods and services like what happened in 2007 because um, the shipping index, the, ba the Baltic Dry Index, went to pretty much zero because people stopped buying because they didn't have the money because things had gotten so expensive in that economic cycle. Well, then when they stop shipping and people are still buying the products that they stopped buying by and large, but they start to soak up the available inventory in any given country, then there becomes, again, a shortage. Well, it takes a certain amount of time for these uh, shippers to get back online, the producers to produce the things, the shippers to ship them, to get them back in the stores. So there are uh, places out there, uh, you know, actual products that you can be watching for right now that you could see that people need, but they're getting too expensive that they're not going to buy, that you may want to take advantage of when they stop buying, the prices collapse. You might want to pick up some extra inventory for yourself and then sell it back into the market when there's a shortage. There's nothing wrong with that. It's called capitalism. It's great. And if you see those things and identify them, as a matter of fact, put in the description below uh, comments of things that you see that are uh, people use all the time that are going to get too expensive. They're going to stop buying them. The price will collapse. And you can take advantage of that situation. So hope you guys got something out of this. I'm going to link this uh, story in the, uh, in the description below. And again, guys, thank you for your time. The Economic Ninja is out.